Hello and welcome to another episode of the Wool and Find Fiber Studio Knitting Podcast. My name is Jule and I am the natural dyer and maker behind Wool and Twine Fiber Studio, which is a small creative space located in northern Germany where I play with natural dyes and natural yarns. Um, this is not a knitting related episode. I feel like I'm saying this in every episode currently. <laughs> But um, rather another info episode where I show you things um, for the upcoming shop update um, that's due next week. Um, I'm sorry for not re recording a lot of knitting episodes recently, but um, yeah, I haven't had a lot of knitting time um, in the last few weeks. It was all a bit turbulent. You probably saw on Instagram that... Um, with uh, my whole family catching the uh, COVID and um, another big, big project going on. Um, things were a little bit different um, from how I planned them to be for this spring. So I had to um, kind of juggle some, some things around and make things work, but had to sacrifice my knitting time uh, a little bit. Um, so yeah, I hope I have a little bit I have some whips going on um, that I can show soon and I hope to be able to record another episode maybe in the next weeks or so um, where I actually show you what I'm working on but yeah I also don't want to um, yeah I still want to keep making those videos for the shop updates because I feel like from your feedback they are very helpful for you um, to plan your purchases and everything and so um, yeah with the little time I have for recording and filming currently, I'm trying to focus on these kind of, um, yeah, introduction videos, but um, there will be more knitting content in the future for sure. And also some, I have some videos planned for, to be recorded over the summer, where I also want to cover some like special topics that are related to knitting. So let's see if I'm going to manage. I'm not, I don't want to promise too much, um, but, yeah, I hope I will be able to um, give you some more content uh, in the next few weeks. Um, but let's jump right into this video where I'm telling you all the bits and bobs around uh, the next shop update. So, um, this video will be structured as my other yarn previews are. So I'm first going to tell you a little bit about what bases we have and like cover the facts around them a little bit and then show you all the colorways that will be available and at the end of the video I'm going to sum up everything around the shop update and some like admin information and stuff and I'm also going to put some timestamps below in case you don't want to watch the full video but are only interested in um, yeah some parts of it you can just skip through with those little um, timestamps and also if uh, the, w the light is changing. I'm trying to adjust because um, we're having the weirdest kind of April-like weather in the middle of May where it's like one minute it's sunny and then it's really rainy again. And So in case I have to adjust the, um, the light and the exposure a little bit, I'm sorry. But I want you to see the colors as well as I can show them. So yeah, I'm going to start showing you the colorways. So, the first uh, basis we're going to restock in this shop update will be our uh, trusted and favorite bases, uh, BFM Massim. And uh, they are called BFM Massim because they are a blend of Blueface Leicester and Massim sheep. So, 75% Blueface Leicester and 25% uh, Massim. And um, they are available in two yarn weights. So we'll have um, the four ply version, which is a fingering weight of 400 meters per 100 grams. And then we have a DK version that is 240 meters per 100 grams. And um, I normally try to dye the colorways I'm showing you on both of these bases. So just in case you're looking into like you like one of the colorways, uh, you can get them at both on the BFMS and DK and the BFMS and four ply. Um, the yarn base is um, has this 25% Massam sheep, and the Massam sheep are 
a mid brown grayish um, sheep which is why the base is not white but rather slightly grey brownish and it gives the colorways a really beautiful heathered effect um, and I really love that so yeah I guess that's it I think um, from the the put up of the yarn is it's a worsted spun one and it's kind of it's our softest yarn in our range and it's uh, exceptionally beautiful for garments and um, also for shawls I love it for shawls so um, but you can also use it for any other knitting project you, you like but that's definitely what I think uh, these yarns are most suitable for. Um, for this update, because <laughs> last update we had our new unspun yarn Thrive and that was the only thing we had in the shop apart from a couple of skeins that were left over from the last shop update and you just absolutely killed this update and we don't have anything left in the shop currently so um, when we were planning the amounts and dye the, like planning the dye schedule for the colorways I decided we should bring back a couple of old trusty favorite colorways um, for a little bit more of a stock because yeah we don't have anything left so it's nice to restock on some old favorites as well as one new colorway um, that will be available. So in total we'll have 10 colorways uh, in these bases. And um, yeah, I should maybe say that this is uh, the last really, really big update before the summer. So um, for the next updates we're planning to have smaller quantities and also less colorways. So um, yeah, just so you know what to expect in the next couple of months but this is the last really big one where we have a lot of different colorways so without further ado and without more rambling I'm going to show you the colorways now. So as mentioned um, all of these colorways I'm showing you are available on both our BFR Mass and Four Ply and DK base and um, I'm going to start out with the more um, neutral colorways and then I'm going to move towards the more springy colors which I think are very fitting right now so um, let me start with this one this one is our colorway sand and it's a perfect kind of neutral I feel it goes with pretty much everything it's a beige and it's neither very warm nor very coldish but I feel like it has a very, very slight pinkish tint to it. I don't know if you can see that, but yeah, just the lightest hush of a pink. And I think it goes with so many other colorways. Like I can show you a couple of combinations later where I show you some colors together. And I think the sand, if you're in doubt and you're planning like a color combination, you can probably just pop sand into it and it fits pretty much everything. And goes with all the, the other colors we're making. So yeah, this is sand. And another neutral we're restocking um, that has also been a favorite for a while is almond. And this is, a, well, like in comparison to sand, it's a much more saturated beige and a lot warmer in undertone. I don't know if you can see that but yeah it's quite a bit warmer in undertone than sand and I absolutely love this colorway because it's just very versatile as well and yeah it goes very well with all our other kind of golden brownish colorways um, which I'm going to show you now <laughs> because why not um, next up we're going to restock our old favorite caramel which is still selling out quite quickly in each update probably still because of it being the original colorway that Lerke or Fibertails designed her humble bee shawl in and it's just a very beautiful warm orangey brown well, not orangey, but like a warm caramelly brown. And I think it goes very well with the almond as well. 
So these are our brownish neutral shades. Then we have another kind of brownish warm shade that is also kind of a classic and this is Maple Leaf. And Maple Leaf is more of a rusty orange brown. That's also very lovely and I think this is both, I mean, looking at it you would also probably say it's a very fall-like color but I feel like it also goes very well for spring if you combine it with some lighter colors. And just to give you an idea of how they look in comparison, these are almond, caramel and maple leaf. So this is our more neutral uh, brown beigey range. And now I'm going to move over to our a more like spring-like and rosy colored uh, range uh, starting with the most neutral one that we have and we haven't had this one for the last updates I think but this is Shell and Shell is kind of like a super light purple but also still in the very neutral range so it's not like a straight up lavender like purple but it's a I would say it's a beige gray with a purple tint and it's also a very versatile colorway that goes with a lot of other things. So this is Shell and next up we will have our trusty um, classic, I think this one was already in the first shop update that we ever had um, and this is Mountain Rose and it's just a beautiful pink light. Uh, hello, focus. I think, <laughs> I think the camera tries to focus on the peonies <laughs> but um, yeah, now we get it. This is Mountain Rose. It's like a dusty muted pink. I think this colorway shows the habit effect of the yarn so well. It's really beautiful, I think. And then for those of you who like a little bit more of a punchy pink, um, that's also very suitable for spring, I feel, we will restock our colorway Coral. And this is more on the warmer pink side, I would say. Can I cover the peonies and it's going to be easier for the camera? I'm not sure. But this is the coral colorway. It's quite a bit warmer than for example Mountain Rose as you can see here. But I think it's very beautiful and it really screams spring to me. Speaking of colors that scream uh, spring, we also have a restock of our colorway Artichoke. This is a light green that's notoriously hard to capture on camera. I would say it's a touch less blue than it is on camera but it's just a very nice and fresh green. It goes with a lot of other colors as well. Just to show you how it goes with other colors. Oops. This literally reminds me of a rose bush. <laughs> Love it. So yeah, artichoke. And then we'll have one more colorway that's a bit more moody because I know some of you are not necessarily the most, like not into the really punchy spring like colors, but prefer the more moody ones from us. So I dyed the colorway raisin. Wow, it looks super dark on camera. It's a touch lighter, I would say, in real life. But it's a dark plum berry shade. That is just stunning, I think. So yeah, this is Raisin. 
And then, uh, last but not least, we have one new colorway um, that I think is a nice addition to our palette. Um, and this is the colorway Honey. And it's a nice mustardy yellow that's also kind of on the golden side. You know, some of you might remember our colorway um, Olive. And that one is quite more on the greenish side, but this one is a true golden yellow that totally gives me summery vibes as well. And yeah, this is honey. And I think this looks really beautiful together with raisin. Just love this. Could also be very nice for an autumnal shawl or something. I don't know if you're preparing for autumn already. <laughs> but it could be a very nice combo for that, I think. Maybe even in combination with... Let me get another one. With maple leaf. Okay, well, we're in the middle of May and I'm showing you autumn colorways. Well, you can definitely see that I'm not the biggest summer person. <laughs> but yeah, um, this is our colorway honey and I really love it. So, maybe I should show you, um, just because some of you might be curious, um, how it looks compared to caramel, because caramel is kind of in the close color family, but this is caramel and it's quite a bit more on the orange and warm side and honey is just straight up very golden. So here you can see the difference maybe. So yeah, if you've been wondering whether there's a difference between the two, I mean it looks subtle right now but it definitely is a completely different color um, if you hold them next to each other, I think. So yeah, let's welcome Honey to the color family. Um, and that is it for the colorways on our BFM Massim basis. Um, by the way, I should maybe mention, because I have been asked this a couple of times um, in... I, I did a little question sticker uh, recently on Instagram. And I was asked about the like the repeatability um, or how to reproduce colorways with natural dyes. And the answer is um, you can't. <laughs> That's pretty straightforward. But um, even though I have colorways and I do restock them every time, um, they are like they are not completely reproducible. They are um, always a little bit different than another dye bath. So. Every batch is quite unique and although I try to reproduce um, by really closely paying attention to um, the process and repeating each step exactly the same way, um, it still can happen that there are variations between the batches. And that's what the beauty is about natural dyes, I feel, because um, yeah, you can never expect a natural product to yield the same result every time. So, um, although I'm having colorways and I'm restocking them and I'm telling that it's kind of a, yeah, a sad restock, um, each batch is unique and you cannot necessarily um, expect, like, for example, you bought a few skeins and then you realized you are having, you're short on one, um, you cannot expect it to be the exact same as the older batch. So, um, alternating skeins is something that can help that, but the general rule I would say is that um, the more you pay attention to um, planning your purchases and buying the right amount that you need, the better, because, yeah, as I said, I cannot uh, guarantee that each batch is the same. Which is also something I love, because, yeah, sometimes I pull something out of the dye pot and it totally wows me, because I didn't expect it to turn out this way. And I have an example for that, um, that I'm going to show you later. But yeah, I just wanted to um, talk about this briefly because, um, yeah, I've been asked this a couple of times and 
yeah, just so you know, it's not like an industrially designed dye that binds to a fiber in the same way each time you use it. It's just a natural product and even with experience and um, doing this on a daily basis, uh, it's not possible to be completely like reproducible colorways. Um, also, sometimes I like to try um, new things and the outcomes of those are not necessarily um, reproducible either and so these are kind of one-of-a-kind colorways and for this update um, I had a few dye experiments uh, earlier in the spring and I'm going to show you the outcomes of these but some of those are just absolutely not at all reproducible so I'm going to tell you which ones there are and those are more like one-of-a-kind ones and I'm not going to be able to restock them at any time but that's also the fun I think sometimes with natural dyes because if you're dyeing the same colorways over and over again um, at least I do feel the urge of trying something new every now and then and yeah the outcomes of those like for example if I'm dyeing with kitchen waste or if I'm dyeing with something foraged, um, the seasons change, the dye stuff changes, the amounts change, you can never expect something to be exactly the same again. So yeah, but I'm going to tell you which ones of the colorways I'm going to show you are the one-of-a-kind ones. Um, I hope I remember, but yeah, they will be mostly on our base Corydell sock, which I'm going to cover in the next section of the video. Next up, um, we have a restock of our non-superwash and plastic-free sock yarn, uh, Corydale sock. And that one is um, suitable for sock knitting, um, even though it doesn't have any artificial additives or any artificial fibers in it. But it has an exceptionally high twist, which makes it very durable and um, you should be able to uh, swap it for any kind of... Um, or swap other um, sock yarns for it because it has a standard 400 meter per 100 grams and um, out of one skein you should get a pair of socks um, unless you have like all up to I think a size 43 or something or 45 even I don't know but yeah for a regular like a pretty medium sized foot size you should be able to get a pair of socks out of one skein. Um, it's 100% Corydale fiber and worsted spun as well and um, this one is a white base it's not heathered or gray as the other BFM Massim ones um, and so the colorways turn out very differently on these. Um, I'm also going to show you an example um, later. But yeah, just make sure that you don't expect the colorways to turn out the same way on a white or a gray base. That's why I'm saying this. Um, and because it's white, I like to use this as a canvas for my dyeing experiments. Like I mentioned um, in the section before, that I like to sometimes experiment with things. And it, the white base really shows uh, the nuances of a colorway very well. And so I like to use our sock yarn for our exper experiments and so yeah let me show you what we've been dyeing. I'm going to start out with the more repeatable colorways that you might remember or that we're kind of restocking and then I'm going to move on to the more one-of-a-kind colorways and tell you a little bit more of the dyeing story behind them. Um, the first colorway we are restocking is almost a classic by now and it is called Shell. We had that one on the BFMS base as well, but as you can see, it's a lot lighter on the Corridor Sock base. And it's like a neutrally, like a neutral kind of purple, I would say. So, yeah, this is Shell, and I absolutely love this one because it has. For me, as someone who loves neutrals and is not very into super bright colors, <clears throat> personally, for my own taste, um, I love that this has a bit of color, but it still is kind of neutral, so it's very wearable, I think. And I think it would also make a great, not only a great pair of socks, but also a great pair, like a garment or something. Because I should maybe mention 
that a corridor sock, although it is a sock yarn technically, it's not not limited to being a sock yarn. You can knit anything out of it, from pretty much everything that requires a fingering white yarn, you should be able to knit in corridor sock. And it's very like it's very durable. So if you have issues with pilling, for example, if you're if you want to knit something that you work in or something, then it could be a good alternative to use corridor sock because it's not as prone to pilling as some other woolen yarns maybe. Um, is it getting really dark here? Hang on. I think this is maybe better. As said, clouds are coming and going and it's a bit difficult here. Um, but next up we have another classic to be restocked and this one is Raisin. And here you can really see the difference of how the like the colorway looks on a white base versus a gray base because yeah on the BFMS and DK let me show you <laughs> so crazy it looks like this <laughs> so yeah quite a bit of a difference right so this is raisin on the BFMS and DK and this is raisin on our corridor sock and it's really funny how the white base brings out the reddish undertones in this colorway more. So yeah, this is the raisin colorway. Next up we have the dove colorway, which is kind of a super light grayish blue. And it's more, it's almost a variegated colorway because it has those little specks of darker gray bits. And I think it's really pretty. So this is Dove. And then we have our um, springy green artichoke on the Corridor sock base as well. So this is artichoke and I think it goes very well with all kinds of springy colors as well. So yeah, artichoke. And then we have, is it getting even darker? I'm really confused right now. I hope this is somehow manageable for you to watch. Ugh. But this is our colorway lavender. It's just a light purple, also very spring-like. And I always like to show this one in comparison to Shell because some people ask of the difference between the two and uh, Lavender is quite a bit more purple than Shell. Shell is a lot more neutral than Lavender. So, and I think now we're on to our last of the classic colorways, like not classics, but the ones I can kind of restock that didn't come out of a dye experiment. But this is Rosewood. And it's like a dusty pink with a little bit of a brown undertone and a tiny bit of variegation as you can see here as well. And then now we are getting to the section where I'm going to show you um, the colorways that are a little bit more one of a kind E. So these ones I won't be able to recreate in this exact same way. So um, they are kind of one of a kind and once they're gone, they're gone. Um, and some of you might remember because I had in the little uh, question sticker I did uh, a few weeks ago on Instagram, some of you asked me to show more of the dyeing process and uh, that was really nice because in uh, that week I had some dyeing planned with a little bit more like kitchen waste and stuff, so a little bit more of the fun um, colorways and I dyed some yarn with walnuts and um, that walnut dyed yarn, then I wanted to show you the, ex the, the outcome of that dyeing uh, session, but
but then I caught COVID and everything was a bit all over the place, but I'm going to show you now. <laughs> and I'm really pleased with how the colorways turned out because, yeah, you know I love a good neutral and this is the outcome of the walnut dye bath. So I decided with these colorways to name them after what they dyed with, just so we don't get any confusion here. And um, this is the walnut colorway. And I'm going to, like, I call this walnut one because it was the first um, dye bath of the walnut dye. And it's just a very pretty warm medium brown that I think is really beautiful. And then, because the dye bath still had a lot of power, now we're getting really bright here. Okay, is this working? Um, because the dye bath still had a lot of power in it, and I don't like to waste anything, so I always try to exhaust my dye baths as well as I can. Um, there was a second batch dyed, and this is the walnut number two. And it's a really light brown, almost a beige, I would say. Very neutral and I think very versatile and easy to combine with other colors. And then, yeah, these are the two together. So these are the two walnut colorways. Walnut 1 and walnut 2. Come on, camera, focus. I think I should not have put the peonies into the picture, I guess. Ah, here we go. So these are the two colorways together. And then, on the same day, I also posted... I don't know if I posted it, but I actually dyed with some um, kitchen waste and I dyed some skeins with onion skins. And onion skins, um, depending on what you like, what color onions you're using, you can use um, brown skinned ones and you can use red skinned ones. And it's always really, I'm always like very amazed at how the results vary depending on how many, like how you mix the different onion colors. For this one, I mainly used um, brown onion skins and threw a couple of red ones in there. And I really liked how it resulted in this beautiful springy yellow. It's a bit blown out by the light, I would say. I think it's a touch more saturated in real life. I don't know if you can see. But this also just screams spring to me. And it was dyed with onion skins. Let me see if I can turn the exposure down a little more so we can see those colors better. But it's like a buttery, beautiful yellow that I really like. And then I also um, tried to exhaust that dye bath well and ended up with the colorway that is this one. And this one will be called Onion Skins 2. And I think it's kind of like a buttercream, really light, yellow, orange almost. And it's like if you want to use something that's not a white but has a bit more of a warm tinge to it, this would be the perfect colorway, I think. And I'm also going to show you these two together. So this is Onion Skins 1 and Onion Skins 2. So, actually, uh, I should have showed you this one before because this one was um, out of the walnut bath as well. But with walnuts, it's kind of it's kind of tricky to exhaust um, the dye baths well because they keep on giving and giving and giving. But if I don't want to end up with a million beige, beigey brown ske uh, skeins, I try to. Sometimes dye a batch in a walnut and then also over dye it with another color. <clears throat> and this is what I did with this colorway and I absolutely love the outcome. 
Is this a touch more muted in real life? But I love this one. And I actually hope I can maybe recreate this. And so I decided to give it a name. And that one is Terracotta. So this is the Terracotta colorway. And oh, I think it goes really well. Look, I have to show you this combo because I love it. This is Walnut to Terracotta and the Onion Skins too. And I think it's really pretty. Also with these two. This is Shell, Terracotta and Walnut one. And I think it's really beautiful in this combination as well. So, last but not least, we have one more colorway. And that one is the one that really, that I mentioned, that really surprised me when I pulled it out of the um, dye pot. Sorry for changing the light again, but... Um, because um, some of you might know if you've been trying natural dyeing yourself maybe or if you're following some other natural dyes um, that you can dye light blushy pinks with um, avocado skins and pits and I've been doing that in the past as well but uh, for this one I was curious first how the storage of the um, avocado waste is actually playing a role because I usually used to freeze them and now I dried them and I also manipulated the pH and also used some like I manipulated the color of the dye bath and instead of a pink I ended up with this it's like a super light gray green and I was so surprised because yeah from my experience hello focus from my experience, I always used to get like pinks or peaches with avocado waste. And this one was a real surprise. So I was really happy with this one and I absolutely love the color because it's so subtle. But also really beautiful. And I definitely won't be able to recreate this, I'm afraid. So if you like, if you like this one, I think you should get it uh, in this shop update because, yeah. Not sure if I can recreate it, but I absolutely love it. And this morning I was seeing these three together. No, it wasn't this one, it was this one. And I absolutely fell in love with the combo. This is the Onion Skins 2. In the middle we have Shell and then we have the Avocado. One. Isn't it crazy how this is absolutely not pink anymore just with some pH modification and like modifiers? I think it's so fascinating. That's why I love natural lying. <laughs> but yeah, I absolutely love this color combo and yeah, you know I'm all about the slightly pastel -y soft shades so all these kind of things are just totally right up my alley but I cannot keep them all for myself so <laughs> um, that is it for the Corridale sock yarn I hope uh, it was a bit interesting to have some insights on the dyeing process I'm trying to do this more in my colorway previews but sometimes I'm just struggling to remember everything I want to say <laughs> Because, yeah, with all the colorway names and all the admin stuff and all the information, I really don't want to miss anything and forget something. So, yeah, I try to limit myself to what I can actually remember. But uh, it's also very fun to take you along with my dyeing sometimes. And so I'll try to do that more in the future. Maybe also when summer is there and I can actually forage um, some more dye stuffs again and... Yeah, let's see how that goes. I'm definitely planning on taking you along a little bit more. Yeah, so I think we're up to uh, the last section of colorway showing. And this is actually a little special that I prepared for you for uh, the spring and summer season. Um, 
also as a little kind of special and a thank you to all of you who have been sticking around for so long and making it possible for me to live my dream job um, as a natural dyer and um, I've been very hesitant to do this because not complaining but it's a crazy labor of love to make these and um, yeah I'm going to tell you a bit more about it later but let me first tell you what it's all about um, we've made mini skein sets for the first time um, and yeah the thing is that we don't have we, we cannot get many skeins from the mill as they are so all of these skeins are hand wound and it took a while <laughs> so but I'm so pleased with how they turned out and it was a lot of fun and I also I don't know I have this thing for mini skeins that I'm always like I like to look at them I don't know if that's strange but yeah I absolutely love to look at them and the more I made them and held them in my hands they really reminded me of little flower bouquets and that is actually the inspiration behind the colorway names and everything and the collections now because they all really reminded me of flower bouquets so they are all inspired by um, different cut flowers and yeah I just really love them um, before I show you the different colors we'll have um, just a quick info um, all the mini skein sets are in our Corridor sock base, so the same that I just showed you. And um, with the 400 meter per 100 grams, each 20 gram mini has 80 meters. Um, approximately, as said, they are hand wound, so it can always happen that there's a gram more or less um, in a mini skein because, yeah, it's a bit tricky to measure it very accurately. But yeah, we should be at around 20 grams per mini skeins and each set will have uh, six minis. So you have 120 grams and that is, um, I think, a good amount to compare with, not compare, to combine with another uh, skein maybe. And then you can maybe knit a stripy shawl or something. I don't know what you're up to, um, but yeah, I could imagine that very well. Um, yeah, and before I show you the colorways now, I'm really curious uh, about what's your favorite thing to do with mini skeins. Because I always, I know it's, for some people it's just gimmicky and, and for some people it's just, they just absolutely love them. So, um, yeah, I'd love to know what's your favorite thing to do with them. Um, I personally love to save them um, and make like color work socks or um, like contrasting heels, cuffs and toes on my socks. Um, but I've also, uh, I have a long <laughs> whip um, that I've not finished for way too long, but uh, that's like a color with like a fade um, of different colors um, from Mimi's. And yeah, that one is so fun to knit, so that's definitely something I like about them, is that like a quick color change can be really fun. Um, and yeah, I'm really curious to hear what your favorite things are you like to do with mini skeins because, yeah. I'd love to know! So, without further ado, let me show you the different sets. Okay, let me show you the colors um, of our mini skein sets. Um, the first one is inspired by tulips uh, that come in all kinds of different colors and so this is the most springy one I feel and now I have to try and show you all the colorways at once but these are all of them together and this is the tulip set I love this because it's just there are so many fun colors and I think there are so many fun combinations you can put them together with. So yeah, the tulip set. Um, next up, because I know some of you are also loving some more neutrals, I put together a little bit more of a muted set. Um, let me show you. And because this set kind of reminds me of um, 
like meadows with little flowers on them. I call this count cornflower. Also inspired by this little bluey one over here. And this is more of a slightly more neutral collection of colors. And I think it's just really lovely. So yeah, cornflower set. And then last but not least, we have a set that's inspired by um, the queen of the cut flowers. That's the rose. And this is the rose mini skein set. It looks really awkward how I'm holding these, right? <laughs> but I didn't want to tie them all together so you can see the colors all next to each other a little bit better. Um, but yeah, this is the rose set. And this is also the one that I just uh, recently sneak peeked on Instagram and that you all really seem to love. And I think it's just so pretty. All the different pinks and some warmer tones in there. So yeah, this is the rose set. And um, these are the three mini skein sets. They are all going to be individually have a little um, a linen tie that I recycle from my own like clothes making and stuff. I like to sew myself some linen dresses every now and then and so I just love to make some use out of the scraps and so I'm tying these together with a little linen tie and they're also going to have a label of course that tells you all the information and I'm really bright again. Um, but yeah, that's going to tell you all about the yarn base and everything. Um, but yeah, I just think they're so cute and um, as mentioned, they are a little labor of love. And as much as I've enjoyed making those, um, I don't think I can make those uh, like regularly. So I guess if you're looking into a little spring treat for yourself, I would recommend um, getting them in this update because yeah, I don't think I can bring them back very regularly because I don't have the time to do this <laughs> all the time. Um, but yeah, I just love it. I just think they're so cute and it was very enjoyable to curate those little palettes and yeah, I think they're just the perfect uh, spring treat and yeah. Don't they remind you of a flower bouquet? I don't know. To me they really look like a flower bouquet when I hold them like this. So that's where the inspiration comes from definitely. And I think especially with uh, the tulip one, it's so fun. There's so many different colors in this one. And it's just very, very springy, I feel. And um, it's also, you can also combine them with some of the other neutrals. That's also why I made so many neutrals for this shop update, because I feel like if you use, for example, one of the more colorful sets, and then you combine them with one of the more neutral colorways um, that we have on our Coradale sock. Like for example, let me let me get the rose set. Whoops. This is the rose set with um, the onion skins two colorway. Or if you want to make it more like. Um, English rose looking, maybe with a beige. That's from Walnut 2, like the colorway is called Walnut 2, but this beige tone, I think it's very beautiful. So yeah, in case you're having trouble um, combining these, um, feel free to always um, message me if you need help um, in what would go best with which set, but I think Pretty much any neutral would go with each set because, yeah, they all have different colors in them. And so I think it would be just very pretty. Um, yeah, so these are the mini skein sets um, 
I hope uh, you're going to enjoy this little treat um, as much as I did making them. Um, and yeah, I think this is it for the little showing part of the episode. And now I'm going to jump to the last part where I'm going to tell you all the admin and all the boring stuff <laughs> around the shop update. Okay, about the admin stuff around the shop update. So the next shop update is going to take place next Friday, May the 20th uh, at 8 p.m. GMT plus 2 this time. I'm always struggling with the, um, like when there's one hour later or before. So uh, I definitely put some reminders on Instagram and I'm also going to remind you um, with the newsletter um, one more time once the update goes live. Um, but yeah. Next Friday, 20th of May, 8 p.m. GMT plus 2 is when all these goodies will be available. And um, in case you did not watch the last uh, video around our Anspan yarn, I was talking about a new shipping method that we are introducing currently and I'm still tweaking some things around it and how to fit it into our process and into our... Um, packing, packaging and everything uh, so it goes very smoothly and so I have to adapt a few things this time so um, with this shipping method there is going to be the option to have your order shipped tracked but not insured because I used to ship everything with DHL tracked and insured but this shipping method especially for overseas orders is very very expensive. I can totally relate that this is not everyone's, um, like that it's not affordable for everyone. And so I decided to um, make the other option possible, but this one is uninsured. So in case um, the parcel gets lost, um, we don't have the same opportunities to, um, like we have with the insured version. I mean, it has not happened to me yet, but yeah, just so you know. <laughs> And um, because there's no insurance on these parcels, I can make the shipping significantly cheaper. Like, I think for overseas orders to US or Canada, it's almost half of what I used to have to charge. Um, but this shipping method is only available for orders, um, like for smaller orders, because it's limited in weight and uh, parcel size. So I will only be able to ship um, around 500 grams with this um, option. I know I've said 600 in the last, um, like in the other video where I said it, but I have to tweak it a bit because I, I cannot really comfortably fit 600 grams into the parcel that is limited by the ship shipping method. And since I don't want to squeeze your yarn in, um, I'm going to limit this to 500 grams. So yeah, I think you should be able to order five skeins, um, up to five skeins with this shipping method and it should be um, significantly cheaper, um, especially for overseas orders. Um, but yeah, I'm still, I'm sorry that I have to change things about this, but I'm, yeah, I still have to tweak and see how it works with the whole process. Um, because there's some other, in the background, there's some other ad admin things that I have to work that are different with this shipping method and I still have to um, adapt my schedule and how I do things to this. So yeah, in case I'm still having to change around some things, um, I'm sorry, but it helps me to improve and to offer you the best service I can when it comes to the whole shipping part of the business. Um, but let's not bore you with this anymore. Um, as mentioned, we are going to have the shop update next week. Everything will be up in my shop that I'm also going to link below. Um, and as said, I'm also going to send you a newsletter where the direct shopping link will be in there. So in case you're not subscribed to that, I can recommend doing so. Um, also because we all know how it goes with the algorithms both here on YouTube and on Instagram and everything and I would not want you to miss out on anything. So the newsletter is definitely the safest option um, and yeah, I guess that's it. I hope I didn't forget anything. Um, ah yeah, there might be some questions around this. Um, we are not, we are only going to restock our classic bases in this update. So I know I told some of you that there will be more unspun yarn in the future and there will be. 
but not in this uh, particular shop update. So for this update it's only our classics and the mini skeins as a little spring treat. And then I hope to be able to restock um, the unspun yarn at a later date again. But I'm definitely going to keep you updated on that as well. Um, but yeah, I think that is it for this update. Um, as always, feel free to message me on Instagram or best write me an email because that's the easiest way to reach me um, in case you need any help with color combinations or have questions around the yarns. Um, I'm always available there and I should be... Um, I'm trying to be available most of next week to help you all with your questions and yeah also if you're unsure about the new shipping method or whatever feel free to ask me any questions and I'm trying to reply as soon as I can. Yeah and I hope you're going to love the little spring collection we curated as much as I do and yeah see you next time. Happy knitting and bye! <laughs>